Look at the Mets. Mm. The Mets were – look how long they were in first place. Speedy was mm. trying to hide that. He was waiting for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was painful. Uh, well, you know, Errol and I had like almost almost a two-hour conversation today about this, Speedy. Mm-hmm. When, when, when you look at the Mets, where they were, and all they had to do was win one game in that three-game series with Atlanta. And amazingly, you know, DeGrom the week before against Oakland, he gets beat up by the A's. Now, I heard that they didn't like the way the mound was in Oakland, and that was kind of an excuse. He had a blister, didn't pitch well, came out of that game early, didn't pitch well in the series in Atlanta. Scherzer got bombed in the series, and I don't think Scherzer was ever the same after he went out the second time Mm -hmm. with the oblique, not really calling it an oblique strain, whatever he called it, a a fatigue (laughs) on the left side. If he's not pitching – it's, he's not 100, percent and then he's trying to come back from that. But the thing, when you got into the into the wild card series, and I know how Earl feels about this, so I want to hear how you feel about this, Speedy. To say you're going to start Scherzer, and if you win, you're going to start Bassett in the game two, and only pitch to Grom if it's a do or do or die game, game three. I'm sorry, you got to win that series in two games. The last thing you want is to have a game three. So they lose game one, which blew his strategy, and DeGrom had a pitch in game two, and they win. So they didn't have DeGrom for the do-or-die game. He had a pitch Bassett who wasn't very good either, and they didn't win. But I, it, Buck lost me when he didn't say, we're not worried about our rotation for the division series. We got to win the wild card series, and we don't want to play three games. We want to win it in two games. And he kind of left that... I, I just didn't get that strategy. And then, you know, the the last thing, you know, when he lost me, you wait till the sixth inning or whatever it was, and you're down six nothing. Let's go see if Musgrove is doing something with the baseball then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a little late for that. Uh, all the conspiracy <laughs> theories of what was happening. Oh, the uh, Joe Musgrove comes to the Astros. He must be cheating, something like that. All the conspiracy <laughs> theories. But my biggest issue with, it, with that, to, to answer your question, was if they knew Max Scherzer was dealing with those types of injuries, why is he pitching in game one was my biggest issue. Jacob DeGrom should have been pitching game one. That's what I was thinking. Too. What's if that unless, was really the case? Unless you tell me he needs more time because of the blister, uh, he's got to pitch. Jake's game. the best pitcher on that team, and nobody's going to argue that. As much as what Max Scherzer has done year in and year out, and how dominant he's been throughout his career, the best pitcher in baseball when healthy, everybody knows it's Jacob Degrom. Everybody knows. Right. Nobody's going to argue that. Right, and there'll be nights and games where Max is as good or better than Degrom. Of course, grow. of course, but. But you got to make a decision. Yeah. And, you know, if you had – and that's the thing about DeGrom. Big decision now. What are you going to do with him? I'm paying him. I'm paying him. You can't find a picture oh. that good. Right. But how much are you going to commit to him for how long? I would do what you did with Scherzer. I would commit four years instead of three because you committed – Two years with a, a third-year option. I would give DeGrom four years with a fifth-year option and, and give him about – you know, 40, 42, 43 million. He's worth that. Now, but I don't trust him to stay healthy. No, and, and, and you obviously, you're the same thing with Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge has been healthy for two seasons. Really, before that, the guy couldn't stay healthy. The guy was fighting injury after injury. Now, all of a sudden, he almost wins the Triple Crown. He has the home run record in the American League. He does all those great things. And everybody said, oh, this guy's going to make 320 This guy's going to make $350 million. And teams like San Francisco is going to give him seven, eight years. I think that's ridiculous because of the injury background. He's playing 162 games. DeGrom's only p- pitching, what, 30 games, 29 games if he's healthy? So, I just, I, I don't know. Uh, to me, his health is a major if. I don't think you can, you know, and they tried this late in the year with him, trying to get him to back down and not pit, throw every fastball at 100 to 103 miles an hour and see if you can be successful throwing in the mid to upper 90s. Because he's he keeps throwing like that, he's going to break down. It's just not humanly possible to keep throwing where your slider's 94 and your fastball's 102. It's unbelievable how good of it is. It is unbelievable. Yeah. But how many times does can he, how many, t- and this is day and age where not many can, but when does he ever go past six innings? Mm-hmm. And, you I'm, know? Yeah, and that's the other problem I, I've I had. Just, 
with the Mets in terms of their structure. Like, they're a talented team, no question about it. But in order for them to take that next step in a modern era of baseball, they have to get more in terms of the other modern concepts that I don't think they've really adjusted to. They've mismanaged pitchers all the time that are very talented pitchers, and it's really hindered their kind of thing. And that's why I don't think they're considered, like, that well-oiled machine. Like, the Braves are a well-oiled machine. Houston, the Dodgers, the Rays, the low-market version of the well-oiled machine. Even the right? Nationals at one point with yeah. all the players that they had, they had St- Strasburg, and they had... Matt, you know, obviously Max Scherzer, Scherzer yeah. and and even the lineups that they had, they like Bryce Harper and 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 a, a Trey and all the different players Rendon, that they've had yeah. and Rendon. I know, you, don't remind me, I watched them play for every team in the postseason. <laughs> I know, so they've had <laughs> they've had all these great players and and when they had them on the team, they 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 built an a good, well oiled machine. And now you look at the Mets, you look at their lineup. Okay, they've added. Uh, Fr- Francisco Lindor. They've added, obviously, uh, Pete Alonso, who's been a part of the organization, but he's, he's starting to build into the superstar that they thought he was. They brought in, um, uh, what's his Martin, name again? Yeah, a- Anna, Escobar. Yeah. Escobar that finally started playing well in the second half. And then and, and these different play Bassett, who's going to be gone this year? He, he is a free agent. Do they stick with him? Do they bring him back? Or do they go after Rendon? Or, 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 what, what, uh, the, Rodon, Ro- yeah. Rodon, I'm sorry. Yeah. Rodon over there, um, who, who's a good left-handed pitcher, that which they need left-handed pitching. Right. So w- what do they do? Do they pay Rendon, Rendon? Do they go after him and, and start to decide what they're doing with a, a, a guy like uh, a Jacob deGrom? I, here's See, the problem. I, I think I think it all starts with deGrom. Mm, I you think so, make, too. Ma- you, you, you can't make any other decisions. Because if, if you don't sign deGrom, maybe you go get both – Rodon and and re-sign Bassett. Mm. You're gonna need both of them. Mm. You know, Carrasco, everybody else. You count on them. They they've had their in, the other the back of the rotations had their injury issues also. Right. Well, Carrasco's gonna be there because he has an option in his contract. Hasn't but... Rodon been hel- uh, not healthy uh, for the earlier last in his years? career? Oh, he was this oh, Rodon. The last two years has been one of the best pitchers. In yeah, the game. last two years, early in his career, yes, he had a lot of injury issues, but now he's yeah. been pretty stable and healthy. Has he been healthy this year? How, how much was yeah. he healthy? This yeah. year? No, no, he's he's been healthy the last two years. I really? think he only missed no, like a I, starter I, too. I, yeah, I think what's gonna be you know for a lot of teams the last two years. Even go back to 2020 with a shortened season, everybody's been trying to hold their pitchers back because they couldn't get the innings, and then the innings jumped to 21. And then with the lockout, you had the short spring training. So everybody was trying to be extra careful with everybody. And I think next year you, you've got the World Baseball Classic will factor in some, but that mm. means earlier start to the spring for, for a lot of guys who are going to be playing in the World Baseball Classic. But you're going to get the full spring training next year and the benefit of guys who've pitched enough innings this year that the bump will be not as severe next year. Maybe we'll start to see if they let them pitch deeper into games, <laughs> pitchers get to 30 starts and over 200. Nobody's getting to 200 innings. Mm. Back when I was young, right. the guys like Seaver and Gibson were throwing 300 innings or more. Mm. Nolan Ryan on a regular basis. You know, n- now the game is too dependent on relief pitchers. It, it really is. And, you know, I, I think when, when you look at this World Series, to think that, you know, tonight the Phillies have Nola, tomorrow is Syndergaard, and that's considered a bullpen game because he's not stretched out. Who would ever think in our lifetime that somebody <laughs> would say we're going to have a bullpen game in the World Series? <laughs> I really hope that Syndergaard gets shelled. I'll just laugh. <laughs> Uh, you you just want to see all the Mets go down. I I don't I, care about Wheeler. Wheeler, I'm fine with. I have no ill will to him. Syndergaard, all the crap he said after he left the Mets, I can't respect him. Could you I imagine? Don't really, I don't really understand what that was all about. What he was upset about. Yeah, the about. Mets. <laughs> you know, hey, Bryce Harper. We talked about this today too. Yep. Signs with the Phillies, mm-hmm. and Nationals fans just booed the heck out of him and were not very nice to him. They treated him the way Phillies fans would treat somebody who left Philadelphia and signed with another team. And I thought our fans were better than that. And I really don't get it because you know, when all is said and done, the offer wasn't what Bryce thought it would be. And he talked to a number of teams that, that off season, San Diego, the Dodgers, San Francisco, the Phillies were the only ones who made him the offer that he wanted. He was and talking to the Yankees the too. To, he was talking to the Yankees too. Yeah. To, to the beginning of spring training. Mm. So I have no ill. Will. I'm, I, you know, good for him. I mean, he played, for the Nationals, big leagues 2012 through 2018, he played on some teams that had gut-wrenching 
first round losses in 12, 14, 16, and 17. So he certainly paid his dues. And this, you know, maybe this is his time, his moment. I mean, he's certainly playing like it is. Mm. I mean, my goodness. And, you know, and then Kyle Schwarber was, you know, remember when he came back Cubs, with a yeah. torn up knee and wasn't supposed to play anymore and came back and played and was a factor in the World Series in mm-hmm. 16? Yeah. I'm telling you, this guy's a great teammate, great guy, and doesn't command the spotlight. You can see how humble he is when he hits a home run. He doesn't put on a big show running around the bases. And my God, he could because he has, he hits some of the most impressive home runs you will ever see with one of the most shortest compact swings. And he does not launch. He does not look to swing under the ball and lift it. He hits down on the ball and gets the bat out in front to make contact. And when you're doing that, you're going to elevate the ball when you get the bat out front. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I mean, I watched him – Last year, the Nationals in June, when he hit 16 home runs in like two and a half weeks. Yeah, a lot of those I've against never, the Nets. Uh, yeah, I've never seen anything like that and really thought, you know, at that point, we got to July 2nd, the Nationals were two games behind the Mets, had turned their season around. There were two games over 500. Trey Turner gets hurt. Kyle Schwarber gets a, like a grade three hamstring strain is going to be out two months. The next day we have a catcher playing second base, don't have a good month of July, and then they trade everybody. And and uh, and then I told you guys in spring training, I think our team's going to lose 110 games. You did. Mm-hmm. We lost 107. I missed I was short by three. Yeah, you should have made a they, bet on they, that. They, they should have <laughs> lost 110 games. Only the Mets could beat the Nationals in September when they should have. <laughs> yeah, that, that was two out of three in, in uh, September didn't help. Yeah, not right. either get, not either getting swept by the Cubs either. That by the way, we are talking to Nationals radio play-by-play broadcaster Charlie Slow is a friend of the show. Good guy. His uh, son, uh, good, obviously a part of the network, uh, good hard worker. And as everybody knows, uh, the season is over for the Nationals. And, and two ex-Nationals have a chance right now to win a it's World over, Series. It's over, but, you know. <laughs> there it is. You never yeah. forget. Yeah. <laughs> never forget. Look at that ring. I need a piece of that ring. <laughs> Don't ever sell that, okay? Because uh, oh, who? Oh, it's got my name on the side. <laughs> nice, beautiful, very nice. That is very nice. That is very nice. Ooh. I like it. That it's a awesome. big ring. I, I could never go out in public with a ring like that. Who? What was the? Who was the giant? The New York Hakeem giant. Hakeem Nix. Hakeem Nix. This this hand I keep score with. It's really hard to do. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it weighs you down. Your hand kind of goes this kind of tilt. Stop this. it! <laughs> <laughs> Don't be Hakeem Nix and sell your ring. <laughs> What did he make no, on that? What was it? Three hundred thousand? I forget the money amount. I was, it was, Why would you sell your ring? I, I, mean, I was amazed. Was he well, that desperate? I was for amazed money? it wasn't more though. I, I'm surprised. He must have been that desperate for money to. to yeah, I don't get that. To he had ring. two contracts with the Giants, and then he then he went to the Colts too, got some more money, and I would imagine he even got more with everything else. Well, Why would you sell the ring? Yeah, casinos can make that happen. Yeah, it's not I like Julio right. Jones losing his jewelry in the water. Or Antoine Walker, <laughs> Antoine Walker. If you know about the story, he made like eighty million dollars as an NBA player. All went away uh, because he was a gambler, mm. and uh, he tried to come back in the G League. Remember that? Uh, it just never worked out. 